Hello, my name is Mars, and welcome back to Salt Sea Chronicles. We have a few things that we can do. Go look at a mural that I believe Nashko himself made. Uh, deliver this crab claw sculpture to Morin to help fix the... What was it? The, the apparatus that was in his workshop. And we can also go play spoils in the mess. I think I'll save spoils until it's time to move the day forward. Have that be the last thing I do. Um, we have this crab claw. We might as well go back to the workshop and repair the thing. <laughs> Morin, you're letting on. Neshko waves the crab claw at Morin, smiling. What about this beauty? Mm. Perfect. Here, let me see. Morin slots the crab claw into Karas's contraption, turns a few screws, and spins a wheel. I could barely see that past that that puppet, Morin. The crab claw opens and closes, and the device plays a light, tinkling melody from somewhere deep inside. How'd you know it went there? Morin looks confused, as though it's both obvious and inexpressible. I didn't either. But now I get it. It's perfect. Morin nods, smiling. Mm. You should tell Karis that when they're all f when they are finished setting up. I think it would help. Mm -hmm. It surely will. At that moment, Morin's radio stutters and a deep voice echoes. Rendezvous at the eye. Ah. Morin turns it off, scowling. Been getting that a lot lately across channels. Can't track the signal. Rust, I hate spammers. The eye? Could be the old sky eye, north of here. A pre-flood observatory, preserved by the family who lived there, who now collect stories. That seems like a fascinating place to visit. Not a beacon of any kind? We've been looking for a beacon. Morin shrugs. That family at the Sky Eye are great collectors of stories, though. If I were looking for a strange place, I'd ask them for sure. Full of good tales. Some of them true. Neshko looks over at Karas's contraption once more. I'm still missing something. I should go and reflect at the mural, like Heli said. I feel like there's a message there for me. Alright. Mural. Mural I've got. I don't get that pun. Neshko and Stu look up at the great painted wall. It's very... It's awful. Hush, it's very impressive. I painted it, I should know. It's awful. I had no idea how talented you were, kitten. Attempt again or offer support? Hmm. But if you wanted to tell me what's gnawing your paws, I'll listen. This... This isn't who I am anymore. I wish it had never been who I was. It looks quite angry. I think that Neshko was an angry young man. Yeah, I was so, so angry. <gasps> Stu sighs. Well, I know anger. Neshko looks at her. You've seen me. I'm so furious at Iris. Yeah, and I feel like she would be mad at Iris no matter what we'd done. Because A, Iris brought Kiddick on board. There's nothing we could have done to prevent that. That was out of our control as the player. Um, and two, no matter what Iris's decision with Giantha had been, it would have been their unilateral decision and Stu wouldn't have liked that. So I think the relationship between Stu and Iris was very positive at the beginning, but I think that it deteriorating is a necessary part of the story. I can't shake it. Would it help to explain it to me? The mural? Neshko shakes his head. I don't know if I can. He draws a deep breath. He does want to try. I used to study the history of the hard times, after the flood took away the world before. 
the stories, how people survived. There was fighting, you know, and suffering. So much suffering. I went very deep. And this is what you painted? I thought it was important to... to express what I felt about those times. But the work just made me angry, and I was even angrier that no one else understood. So full of rage. <gasps> Stu thinks. You know one of my kids won't speak to me at the moment? Nashko didn't. No use rehashing why, but it's true. And I think the worst thing is the silence. Can't move forward if we don't talk about it. And this? This is like you talking, isn't it? Mm. Neshko turns his face to Stu. I frightened myself. I got lost in it. I, I realize what I have to do now. Mm. I have to talk to Magdalene. Let's go then. The atmosphere is cooler, closer to Neshko's mural. Up close, it seems faded, bleached by the sun, a little abandoned. Alright. And, yes, that will advance the day. So we're actually going to go play Spoils now. Because once we advance the day, I think Spoils goes away. And I want a chance to learn what the four Alcazar house rules are. Looks sketchy. As the two approach the card players, a hush falls over the table. It's him. He was the top spoils player on the island, apparently. Neshko wears a tight grin and turns to Stu. My reputation precedes me. If we partake, we must be sensitive. It might be a bit too much to defeat them too soundly. Really, kitten? Wanna play? We must win them over, not the game. Hello, do you want to play? Neshko wavers. Neshko glances at Stu. It would be rude not to. Please, Stu. Let's go easy on them. Stu laughs warmly. Okay, so we want to lose? Alright, saving face. Lose, but not by too much. It's a mission. In this fraught homecoming, Neshko wants to smooth things over by letting the opposing team, team win. But it needs to be subtle. See if you can lose, but not by too great a margin. Less than 48 points total. Oh boy. Okay, the rules aren't different. We just have a different mission. Alright. Bidding. Eh, uh, how about shells? All right, shells it is. All right, um, let's start out trying not to lose. What was it, 48 points we want to be the margin? Okay, now how about Because I believe Stu bet with anchors. Or was it fish? I don't remember. Doesn't matter. Okay. Does it want to be 48 points per round? Or... Hold on. Um... <sighs> oh my god. This is going to be so hard. Um... I feel like every time I've won in spoils, it's been luck. Um, 48 points total, so at the end of the day. Ready when you are, Puckle. Okay. Um, I don't have... I have shells. Yes. So we can catch up a little bit. Um... We're still losing. Okay. Losing by a little more. I'm not sure what's best. 
Oh, okay. We don't want to give them too many points, so I didn't put down my jack. Okay. Alright, I can... No, I can't beat that. Um... Let's put down a, a, what do you call it? Forsooth, this is not ideal. Okay, we're catching up. Ah, oh, damn it, now we're winning. Now we gotta try and lose, okay. Um, please, Stu. Please do not beat him, Stu. Okay. Ugh. A close run thing. Yep, indeed. Okay. Okay. I made it a little closer. I want to try and lose the next two hands at least. The next two tricks. I keep forgetting the terminology. Ugh. I'm too good at this. Okay. Oh, did we tie? Oh. They won by two. Uh, even better than a tie. Okay. So we're going to want to lose a little worse this time, I think. And I can do that. By contributing a card to the 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 uh, sweeper suit that I don't have, I don't have good luck with the sweeper suit. So I don't have good sweeper cards. I had a lot of them last time. Okay. All right. Let's lose by a wider margin this time, Stu. I, I wonder what Stu's AI is being told to do at this point. Like, is she trying to help us lose or or what? Okay. It doesn't really matter here. That's an interesting behind the scenes thing to think about. When our goal is to lose, what does our teammates AI say to do? Okay, now we're losing by too much, I feel like. <laughs> um, I know it was a very small margin before, but we also don't want it to get too big. We have two points at least. Okay. Can't beat it. I didn't want to give them three points. If that's what it came down to. All right, Stu. Thank you. <sighs> close the close the gap a little bit. Um, we can take these this small handful of points. That'd be good. All right. Now we can try and lose again. Okay. That's good, I think. Uh-oh. I'm gonna sneeze. 
Achoo! Okay. I sneezed. Okay. Um. Either way, I'm not gonna give us any points. It's a tie, such as life. What? Oh, we both got the same points in that in that trick. It's not a tie overall. I got scared for a second, lady. Okay. Want to give us a few points? Okay. Okay, that jack will give us a good number of points to close the gap, but we still lost. I, I think I think losing by a small margin won't be too hard. Not as bad as I thought it would be. Okay. So what's the gap now? Oh, was that the whole thing? Okay, they're winning by 15? Okay. We could probably even... No, we can't win this round. Um... Okay. <laughs> we should probably still try and lose. That would be best. But again, not by too much. We're close enough in overall scores that I fear surpassing them if we win by any small margin. Um, does it really matter? No. Okay. We gotta start amassing some points. <laughs> oh, I guess we did. Why did we get those 11 points? I, I'm not paying attention, I guess. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. This is a tense thing to thread. Um, we can try and sweeper it. No, no, it's not worth it. Um, let's give them some points. Yeah. Using my sweeper didn't seem like a good move. Um, okay, it'll get us some points, hopefully, yeah. Close the cap. Get us a few more points, maybe. Okay. Okay, now we try and lose. Okay. Oh no. Oh boy, that is close. It is a close run thing. Indeed. Okay. I could sweeper it, but I don't want to... Oh boy. Uh oh. Uh oh. This is not good. Stu, please be careful. 
Uh oh. Okay. Um. This is going to be extremely close. Oh boy. Oh no! Oh! Damn it! Ah! Oh. oh no! Oh, it was so close! Uh, I, I kept it a little too close. Told you he was unbeatable. Neshko sighs. This win was not wanted. It was not. Oh. I, I felt like we had it in clutch. The loss. But we didn't. I'm, I'm sorry. The other player grumbles. Um, thank you for a good game. You really were worthy opponents. Strong players. Smart moves. I know you don't believe that. Sue stifles a laugh. Yes, we had a great time. The player continues to grumble as they leave. No. Oh. Oh, that's a very disappointing victory. <laughs> All right, Magdalene. In the shadow of Iluka, Magdalene looks up as Neshko and Stu approach. Her face is inscrutable. You're back then. What do you want? Neshko looks at the ground, struggling for words. I wanted to. I wanted to say how sorry I am, Magdalene, about what happened. <laughs> Just happened, did it? Alright, Stu. You haven't been as useful as I hoped you would be in smoothing things over. Um, so maybe don't try to help. In the tense silence, Stu searches for something to say. Your art is very pretty. I like all the lines. <laughs> Magdalene laughs loudly. Neshko flushes. Stu doesn't understand at all. All sparkly? Where'd you get it? You, Luca. Gallo sent it along. He's my son, you know. Oh. It came from that jig they've got going. Gallo is your son. I see. Is there something I can do, Magdalene? To make amends? Magdalene's face is hard, but her posture relaxes a touch. <laughs> it's not me you should be asking. And it's not about making things as they were before. It's about how you remake things around the change. What about Caras? What about yourself? That's where forgiveness will begin. I don't... I don't understand. Please? Magdalene's face softens. It was good what you did for Karas today. Their art. I was glad to see it working again. You saw? I keep track. Listen, speak to Karas after they set up for the exhibition, at noon. And go back to your old work. Forgiveness is a complex, unselfish thing. Go to these things open and unassuming. Neshko nods, determined. <sighs> I want to try. Well then. Dawn scuttles towards noon. Alright, Magdalene's gone. Let's look and see what new has been added here. Spoilt for choice, the art of winning, of course. Okay. The clay cove is now empty, but the ceramics catch the midday sun as though the walls themselves open the opening of the exhibition. Ooh, it's lovely out here. We can go back to the mural. We can talk to Karas. We found this place through dreams, but why? Was the fort calling us? What is it you want us to hear? Pesci's live performance. Puppets. Uh, let's go into all the places first and see if there's anything inside. Most of the people and all the crabs have gathered in the square for the exhibition. The workshop stands unoccupied. And the mess. Mm. 
Now the exhibition is open. Most people have migrated to the square. All that's left in the mess is... The mess. Funny. Lasting impressions. Stu picks up one of Morin's puppets, which have been arranged all around the square. The clay is pliable, still cool to the touch. This one resembles Karas. Stu, please be careful. Oh, no need. It's part of the performance. Play with it. Be careless. Don't squeeze. Stu pokes the Karas pu puppet playfully on the nose. Hey, this is fun. Feels satisfying. I wonder if I can get an iris shaped one. <laughs> Jesus. Make me feel old, will you? Squish. Morin said it was okay, Neshko. Don't panic. Neshko tries to sit back as Stu squishes the clay with abandon. Squish. He fails. Stu. Oh, it brings me joy to see my work played with. But it'll be destroyed. It will be changed. As people interact with them, they are changed. Whether we realize it or not, no matter how brief our interaction, we affect the people around us. Neshko shifts uncomfortably. Squish. Why are you so disturbed, Neshko? I have negatively affected both art and people. Squish. I am working on forgiving myself, but it is not easy. You cannot undo your effect, but... Morin pip picks up another puppet and quickly reshapes it into a Neshko before handing it to him. Reflection enables you to be more careful and thoughtful next time. Squish. <laughs> a pause. Stu looks up. I think this one's all squished out. Thank you, that really helped. Morin takes the clay from her hands, grinning. Catharsis. Home is where the artist. Togato is in the midst of adding final touches to her sculptures as Neshko and Stu approach. Beautiful, Togato. Lovely, um, and what is it? Togato sighs. It's that age-old artist dilemma. When do I stop? When do I accept things as finished? Neshko smiles. That's why we consider our work as a practice, not one single artifact. There is no end, no final touch. The work is the garden through seasons and years, not the planting of one plant. Tagato hums in agreement. You consider yourself an artist still, I see. Good. Neshko wavers. I'm not sure. I haven't created anything in a long time. Fallow, then. Neshko isn't sure what to say. Have you spoken to Magdalene yet? I have. Well then, welcome home. I'm afraid. He gestures towards the Kelpie, moored in the distance. My home is with that ship and its crew, just for the next while. But, Chigato, your words mean a lot. There is a lot to look at here, wow. I mean, there's always a lot to look at, but here it's very condensed into a very small island, I guess. Poetry reading. Alfred smiles and beckons Neshko and Stu over to him. I have written a poem. Lovely. I would like to read it for you if you'll honor me with your time. Neshko smiles. Of course. Can't wait, kitten. From digging, these crabs create a home, a burrow for protection. From digging, I find past selves and mistakes, a biography. Some creatures break the earth and uncover a sanctuary. I simply fell through. Stu applauds. Those crabs really do everything, don't they? Muses, companions, and what do you call it when they mean something that they aren't? Cat's got my tongue. Metaphor. A uh, metaphor? Yes, I'm smart. I'm a literature student. That's the one. It doesn't have to mean anything at all, of course. Writing it has served me already. I feel 
lighter. Neshko smiles. Sounds like a success, then. It was a lovely poem, Alfred. Crab Ballet! Neshko and Stu quietly joined the crowd, gathered for a much-anticipated performance. Pesci's famous Crab Ballet is a profound performance. People travel from all over to witness the clacking wonder. Pesci, the director, is muttering under his breath to his performers, four large red crabs. They take their marks. Stu is astonished. Two crabs arrange themselves stage front and begin an elaborate, well, the word has to be dance. Another is off to the left, mimicking one of the dancers, partnerless. The final crab is positioned some distance from the stage, making its way slowly towards the couple. The closer it's, it gets, the more foreboding the music accompanying the performance becomes. As the fourth crab finally reaches the dancing pair, the music ceases. The pair remain embraced, moving to a rhythm, while the solo dancer now observes the standoff with beady eyes. As the fourth claw crab raises an open claw, Stu blinks and Neshko sighs. The lights go dark. A warning to us all, I think. Neshko turns to Stu. Did he train them? How long does it take? You don't train crabs so much as persuade them that it's in their best interest. Oh my god. <laughs> that sounds like animal abuse to me. <laughs> Just like cats. Okay, when you put it like that. It's not abuse to make a cat believe that being your best friend is in their own interest. Okay. When you put it like that, Stu. Pesci spots Neshko's familiar face. Ah, Neshko. It is good to see you. I'm honored, Pesci. Thank you for sharing that with us. Oh, the honor is all mine. Grateful my piece has resonated. Do spread the word. Krabby is on all week. Stu, having seen an entirely unexpected side to the crabs, is lost for words. A crab debating performance. A round of applause. <laughs> That's the achievement I got. Among the tallies scratched into the walls are personal inscriptions. Prayers, love letters, and confessions blend together. Alright, let's look at the mural again first. Hmm. Leaving your mark. Neshko is gazing at the mural, trying to work something out. I still think it's impressive. Hmm. I thought it was the anger itself that was the problem. I thought I was the problem. But it's not that. It's what I did. Would it help to tell me what you did, kitten? Mm. Neshko smiles. Come for the first time since he landed. You're right. It's time. He takes a deep breath and then looks out across Alcazar. Magdalene and I were close, but we took our art in different directions. She was about beauty. Beauty and form. Abstraction. And I, I thought art had to have purpose, meaning, impact. And those are opposites? Not in my mind. I mean, even the most abstract piece can have meaning, not only to the person who makes it, but the person who views it. Even if the meaning is not the same to the person who made it and the person who viewed it, it still means something. That I don't think they're opposites, but I understand why Neshko would. We argued about it for hours, days, always as friends. But as I got deeper into my work, I, I lost perspective. I got bitter, angry. Neshko blinks and rubs his eyes uncomfortably. Go on, kitten. Neshko's fists tense. I broke it. I broke everything. You broke? Duh. One night, in the middle of an argument, I picked up a pot she had just finished and flew threw it right on the floor. Mm. Oh, kitten. <laughs> and when it cracked open, so did I. I started smashing everything I could see. 
so it wasn't just the one pot. Karis came to see what the noise was, and it was terrible. Well, broken pots can be mended. It was her work, her life's work. In truth, our friendship. I left that night, and I never painted again. I spent the years since running, running fast and far, working to never let myself be angry, to never care about anything enough to have anger even be a possibility. And now? I was so tired of running, of avoiding connection. And when it looked like we could get some information here, you came for forgiveness. I, I thought I needed to ask Magdalene to forgive me. But now I see that's wrong. I need to tell her the truth. My truth. That's it. Well, that sounds like a plan. Neshko bows his head. Perhaps. Definitely. Neshko sighs. First, I should heed her word and seek out caress. Hmm. And then, Magdalene, I'll try the truth. Okay. Needed some tea. Neshko's mural. The shadows of Neshko's mural shift and change with the direction and quality of the light. It may not be something Neshko is proud of, but it really is something. I think it's telling that they never painted over it. Even though he was somewhat outcast in the society, and it's such a small island and people will be walking past this mural every day, being reminded of him. They never painted over it. Also, that horse shape looks like makes it look like Guernica. It looks a lot like Guernica. The square has transformed into an exhibition. Its usual buzz now a contemplative thrum. Home is past. Helia is center stage. Her dress has an ethereal, alive quality to it. The space is not crowded, and Heli has the audience's full attention, poised and ready to perform. All I seek is a place, a heart or a home, to stay still as I fail to return the favor. Heli's voice reverberates through furniture, foundation, sinew. Will you see me? I want to see you. I want to see who I once was in you. To accept myself as ever-evolving, I must extend that grace to the places I call home. Oh. Got a text. Sorry about that. Heli pauses for a moment. Will you see me? I want to see you. I want to know you. Know me. Always. That was different to most songs I know. So it was a song. I, I guessed from the waviness of the lines, but I couldn't really come up with a melody for it. How do you mean? I don't know, kitten. Whatever she did was like Stu thinks. Like the difference between grub you pull together in half an hour and the kind you cook over days. Neshko nods. A good metaphor for the complexity of her composition. They leave. Stu is still thoughtful. Alright, Karas. Uh -huh. Ham radio. Karas holds a broken radio in their hand, considering where it might fit in their growing tower. The top? A signal? No, deep in the heart of it. The tower shifts precariously around Karas's arm as they place the radio inside. Karas? Neshko? Neshko. Good, good. Hold this chain for me. Hmm. What are you building? It's so intricate. Stu eyes its precarity warily. Is it definitely safe? This is my work now. The greatest thing I've yet made. How high are you thinking of going? Karas looks at the tower, hands on hips. As high as I have to. They won't stop, you know. You can't make them. Who are you talking about, Karas? Karas looks at Neshko, scowling. You know, 
the silent sails. The ship! I've seen, dreamed, what they're building at the beacon. It's beautiful. I want to make something that beautiful. Hmm. Wait, Caress, you know about the beacon? Caress, where is it? And how do you know about it? Is it bad, what they're doing? You have to tell me. Hmm. Too many questions, too much talking. I need to concentrate. Leave me alone. Neshko takes a deep breath. Hmm. Caress, I... I wanted to say that I'm sorry for what happened before I left, for how I acted, for what I said to you. I'm sorry. Karas's attention is held by the tower. Karas? I don't know what you're talking about. I've forgotten, or I don't care, or it didn't happen. I don't know. Let me work, please. Mm -hmm. I think we should listen. No good getting in the way. Neshko hangs his head. It's beautiful, Caress. I hope I see it finished. Neshko sighs, but somehow he seems more settled. Mm -hmm. Let's find Magdalene. I have something I need to say to her. Typo there. Mending the cracks. Neshko catches Magdalene's eye across the square. She nods very slightly. He walks over, a new confidence about him. I wanted to thank you. You were right, of course. I'm up to date now. Sounds very dramatic. Magdalene nods, just once. I don't know if I can forgive myself for what I did that night, and I won't ask you again. But I'm working on it, moving on. A pause. It'll take time. I made some new friends lately. He gestures to Stu, who gives a little wave. It's been good to find a community again. Calming. I can tell. You're different. Seems good for you. In a way, my painting never was. Not really. But what about you? Your work? It's so... very beautiful. And I understand it now. Thank you. It's going well. It keeps me happy. And people are taking an interest. Someone sailed by just a few days ago, traded for a lot of my recent work. Very keen. K's, I think. <gasps> K's? What work and why? You know the captain? Magdalene looks puzzled. So eager. Desperate, even. I'd taken things in a new direction, been painting scenes of the Encelo Fault. Hold on. The water is north and east of the archipelago. Yeah. The skies there have grown so strange. The patterns. I wanted to paint them. I couldn't stop, really. Traded me for the lot. <laughs> oh, thought I was going to sneeze again. For art of the fault. Kay said I didn't know what I had. Magdalene snorts. I'm not the one who doesn't know. Neshko is struggling to take everything in. We have to tell the others. Stu nods. I have to leave soon, Magdalene. So soon? That's it then? That's it, is it? I wish it wasn't, but the people I'm with were following something important. Urgent, even. We have a radio, however. I, I'd like to hear from you. Sometimes, if you want. I understand if he wouldn't. Magdalene studies his face. I'd like that, too. With time. Uh. Neshko smiles. May we all have time. As they leave, Stu pats Neshko on the shoulder. Well done, kitten. Alright. I guess all that's left is to sail. Alright. Okay. So, I was wondering... The light. If the beacon was to be found anywhere, it would be via the light. Alright. Um, is the light a place we can go? Like the other place we can choose to go in addition to... Where was it? 
the the sky eye. Magdalene's Artworth, Herders and Gardeners, Pesci and his Crabs, Dream Sailors, Heli, there's Heli too, Trendsetters, Heli, you're everywhere, and more crabs, synchronized crabs. The old ruins that Fort Alcazar was built upon are home to both a colony of artists and of shiny red crabs. They coexist happily and sometimes even collaborate. Alright, well I guess we go back on the ship. Ready to return to the boat? Sure. <laughs> Alright. Uh, since we played Spoils, I guess I'll let this episode go on a little bit longer. Sandy busies herself in the workshop for a moment of solitude and without much room for anything more vigorous, stretching. It looks like she's holding a feather duster. Within a matter of minutes of her return, Stu manages to get into another heated ar argument with Iris. The atmosphere on board is tense. As though no one's watching. Ade, having what babies do in their hippins, gives a smelly cry. Oh, baby. She hitches them up and heads down to the workshop where the clean laundry is kept. Instead of laundry, however, Molte finds Sani in her own world singing a tune to herself while making up dance moves on the spot. Mulpe clears her throat. Sandy jumps. Her yelp is loud enough to make Mulpe take a step back and stumble. Sandy leaps forward and catches her and Ade before they can fall over. Sandy composes herself, trying to act smooth. Oh, hey there. Just here for one of these. She grabs a replacement cloth and, with a wink, climbs back up to change Ade in the open air. Aw, they're cute. Stinky, a puckle's nest. Merle scrambles out of his bed, provoked by a strong and pungent stink. It smells like a creature of some kind has defecated here. That's happening a lot on the boat right now. Wow. Kiddick looks up. Maybe Iris? Merle looks startled. What? No, I just meant, like, Iris is always in here. Maybe they know why it's so stinky is all. I would like to, up to hear what explanation Iris could muster up to explain why it reeks of... He sniffs disturbingly. Sulfur? Kiddick, searching for the source, digs up a piece of clothing. What's this? Merle's eyes light up with recognition. Ade's hippin'. Well, now it all makes sense. Yuck. Well, you could hardly blame a baby for not cleaning up after themselves. We're still talking about Ade, are we? Merle and Kiddick stifle laughter as they hold their noses and move the soiled tippin into the laundry sack. What? Why are there dirty diapers all over the place? It's weird. Iris interrupted. Iris looks over at Neshko from the radio. So, tell us. Stu brings Neshko a cup of tea from the kitchen. Thank you. Who did you see? What did you find out? Calm down. Neshko? Neshko glances at Iris and Stu, unsure what is going on. Neshko smiles, hoping that good news will break the ice. It was quite moving. I saw some old friends whom I thought I might never see again when I left. And we have intriguing information to share. What about the beacon? Let Neshko speak in his own time. Interrupting is very disrespectful. You should know. Stop, stop it, Stu! Why are you acting like this? Neshko's eyes bulge. He's never seen Iris or Stu like this, and it's very much harshing his mellow. I'll, uh, get everyone together for the meeting. Stu storms back to the kitchen, solving the problem for now. So rude. Okay, we got a little fight going on again. Um, the meeting will probably take a while, so I'll, I'll end it here. 
uh, next time we'll decide whether we're going, my guess is, to the light or to the sky eyes. And I don't really know what the difference would be between those places. One is more searching for a physical location, I guess, and the other is searching for stories. I would I would uh, err towards looking for a physical location at this point, but um, we'll decide next time. And until then, I have been Mars, and I will be back with more Salt Sea Chronicles. <laughs>